here's the, the magic. I'm calling it magic because it is of the Smith maneuver. So here's a overall, you know, an overall concept of how the Smith maneuver works from a high level. So basically what you're doing is you're, you're generating increasing tax deductions monthly just by paying down your mortgage. And what you're doing is, is you're essentially paying down your non-tax deductible debt faster and faster. And then you're having access to more money that you can use to invest, which continues the cycle. And it's a bit of a snowball effect. As you have more income coming in from your investments, you're able to pay down your non-tax deductible debt faster and faster and faster. And that allows you to, uh, to continue to increase and, and basically switch your mortgage from being not tax deductible to being tax deductible. And don't worry, I have lots of graphs and charts for you guys to look at because this is a bit confusing, but um, I'm gonna be able to explain this in, a, in an easy way. And one of the best parts about this is it's easy. It's not even that difficult. It's not rocket science. Um, it requires little to no money to set up. Really, all you need to do is, is if you don't already have a readvanceable mortgage, which we'll talk about in a second, um, then all you have to do is, is, uh, is use a broker or, or talk to your bank about getting a, a readvanceable or home equity line of credit is, is commonly uh, called. And, uh, and this product is, is going to allow you to, uh, to start saving money in tax right from day one. So let's talk about how it works. Essentially, what you're doing is you're making your mortgage payments on your mortgage. And then you're going to re-borrow the principal that you've paid down on the mortgage. So re-advanceable means that you can re-advance the principal you've paid down in your mortgage without having to re-qualify, which is really cool. So what you're doing then is as you pay down your mortgage, you're going to re-borrow the money that you've paid down and you're going to invest that money. And whenever you borrow money to invest with the in, uh, intention of, uh, of earning an income, uh, the money is tax deductible. Now, I do have to put in a disclaimer here that Make sure you speak with an accountant to make sure that any tax things that you're doing, uh, you run it by your accountant to make sure that it's green lighted and it's okay. So let's talk about what a regular mortgage looks like. So if you bought a $500,000 property and put $100,000 down, this is your standard mortgage. Um, nothing really happens to it. So you're paying down your mortgage and you don't get access to the, the equity in the home or anything like that. It's just a regular mortgage. So it's not tax deductible. Now let's look at, take a look at a readvanceable mortgage. So in this case, a readvanceable mortgage means that you have a mortgage and then a line of credit component. Now on day one, you can see that there is no line of credit limit available at this particular moment. Um, so you still have $400,000, it's not tax deductible. But what happens is as you slowly pay down your mortgage, your line of credit limit will slowly increase. And so now in this case, let's, let's give you an example here on your $400,000 mortgage, your mortgage payment might be 1692 a month your interest costs here would be $660 a month. And that's the amount that you're flushing down the toilet. Sorry, goodbye interest. However, the principal, so you've paid down $1,031 on the principal. What happens to that? Well, now it actually pays down your mortgage a little bit. And now your mortgage balance goes from 400,000 down to 398. And now your line of credit limit goes up by $1,000. So now you have access to additional credit which is really, really cool. And all you're doing is just paying down your personal mortgage, which is then increasing your line of credit. And now you have 1,031 that you can now reborrow and use that to invest. Now, again, I wanna highlight this because this is really important. It's the use of funds and what you're using the money for, okay? So you have to be using it towards things that are increasing your net worth. Um, let's talk about, um, about consuming, first of all. If you're borrowing the money for consumer items, these are not tax deductible. You cannot borrow the money on the line of credit to go uh, buy a nice car, to go out for dinner, et cetera. You have to be borrowing the money with the expectation of, of generating an income. So it really comes down to, and the term that I use a lot is borrowing money to invest. Uh, and that creates a tax deductible mortgage. I'll give you an example of this because this comes up quite a bit, especially with our clients that have rental properties. It's not the property that you're borrowing the debt against that determines whether it's tax deductible or not. It's actually the use of the funds. So this is where if you have a personal residence, which typically would not be tax deductible, but if you borrow against it to use money to invest, then the money is tax deductible. In the reverse, however, we do have some clients that actually have a rental property that's nearly paid off and they borrow money against the rental property to go buy a personal residence. Now, just because the debt is secured by the rental property does not mean that it's tax deductible because the CRA will look at what money or what did you use the money for? If you used it for personal use, AKA a personal residence, then that debt is not tax deductible. 
So again, it's very important to understand the difference here, and it really comes down to the use of funds. So over time, what's going to happen is you're going to be continually paying down your mortgage, and then you're going to see that now your line of credit limit continues to increase. And so now on that $400,000 mortgage that we used to have, maybe now two twenty-five. dollars is borrowed on the on the uh, mortgage portion, but now the line of credit is at 175. So in total, between the two, you still have $400,000 in total credit available to you between your personal non-tax deductible mortgage and your secured line of credit that you have. And um, and slowly over time, you're going to continue to uh, to pay that down, and it snowballs a little bit. So now you're you're borrowing and reborrowing more and more and more to go out and uh, and reinvest those funds. Now, over time, eventually that line, that mortgage gets down to zero and your entire mortgage is now tax deductible. And now you're borrowing all of that money to invest. And at this point, if you've done this correctly, now your $400,000 is all tax deductible. So the big question, how much do you save when you do this? And the answer is it's a lot. It's a lot. 